I've been here in, uh, in Ljubljana attending the, uh, a, a very prestigious symposium which is called Advances in Robot Kinematics, which is a symposium which was uh, funded by the uh, director of the institute where I'm hosted, the Josef uh, Stefan Institute here in Ljubljana, Professor Jadran Lenacic, and this is running since 1988. And we've been attending these conferences for uh, uh, a long time, every two years. And uh, uh, it's funny because uh, the conference is always held during the last week of June uh, on even years. And so there, there's always either a Euro or a World Cup competition. So we attend the conference and also we watch the, uh, the soccer matches on TV. So yesterday I gave a presentation on a new project. This is called RODIMAN. RODIMAN stands for Robotic Dynamic Manipulation. And uh, this is a project which has been funded by the European Research Council, which is still part of the European Union, but it's a different funded body from the European Commission. So the European Research Council is funding uh, excellence in research uh, from proposals uh, from, from scientists from all over the world. Of course, you have to spend your grant in a European institution. And I was lucky or maybe good enough to have a, a sort of interesting proposal. And this is a, a sort of blue sky research at the frontier of uh, robotics uh, research uh, methodologies and also technologies. Because uh, uh, normally when we speak about uh, robot manipulation, we mean uh, uh, a gripper or maybe a multi-finger hand, which could be anthropomorphic or like with maybe uh, five fingers, although maybe three fingers and a palm are enough to uh, grasp the object. And those are the typical applications for industrial robotics and also for service robotics in which typically you grasp the object and you just uh, pick it up and you do some sort of uh, handling of the object or you can do some sort of assembly. Now, when we speak about dynamic manipulation, we mean we remove the assumption that the object is rigid so we're speaking about no rigid the form of objects and also the manipulation is not necessarily of prehensile type like grasping but in this case is non prehensile and we want to take this very difficult problem to be solved by a machine by a robot so the achievements that we expect to pursue within the Rodman project are of three types we want to develop new techniques for perceiving the location of this object in the 3D, so we have to localize, and also we have to be able to track the object, especially if the object is moving fast. We want also to plan some good motion for the robot in such a way as to manipulate those objects. And last but not least, we want to control the overall robotic system. So within the Rodman project, this is just a rendering of the humanoid-like platform we're building. So there will be a torso, there will be a mobile base most likely on Swedish wheels, omnidirectional wheels, and the system is expected also to have two arms, two hands, and a sensorized head, and to do some sort of uh, challenging tasks as this kind of rendering uh, show. And this is the same sort of complex manipulation tasks that humans are called to execute, and also the difficulty of the scenario is complicated by the fact that the robot has to perform such tasks, such tasks in the presence of human. So this is a very important research area in robotics. This is the area of human-robot cooperation. So compared to the old times, the robot is not used behind fences in segmented areas, but there is a sort of sharing of the, same, of the same workspace between robots and humans. This, so we want robots to operate in so-called anthropic environments. So environments which are cohabited by human beings. And since this was a research proposal coming from my team from the Prisma Lab at the University of Naples in Italy, uh, we thought about a demonstrator to uh, show the complexity of doing dynamic manipulation with a robotic platform. And so I was one day in the lab with my students writing the proposal for, uh, for this dynamic manipulation project and we were thinking about uh, maybe manipulating some sort of uh, tissues or maybe some sort of limp material, like, like maybe a kind of linen or rubber objects. And then, you know, as a tradition, when, when you work hard and you take a break, you want, uh, what is the uh, fast food by excellence in Napoli? We are the inventor of the pizza. 
And so we came up with, uh, with, with this idea of having, uh, as a demonstrator, a platform performing all the phases of making pizza. Making pizza is a simple food and takes five minutes to prepare. But uh, to do this by a robot is very complex because this is the dough and you have to stretch the dough and make a sort of disc of pasta, of the pasta for the pizza. And so, as, as you can see in this video, hopefully, uh, those are some sort of, these are motions which have been acquired in our, we have a, a, an arena where we have a motion capture system. So we have a system of 20 cameras that can scan the motion of a human. So uh, this is a re an animation which has been reconstructed. So we place markers on the students and the student here is simulating the sort of stretching action that is needed uh, to make the disc of the pizza. And this is the most challenging uh, phase of the process of making pizza because this is the, the tossing. And uh, typically this is a sort of old art by the pizzaiolo chefs in Napoli that uh, it's even thrown in the air. And, and make and kind of making kind of larger and thinner, you know, to have a, a good cooking. And then also this is for a control, from a control viewpoint, it's a kind of challenging uh, task with two hands. So this is B-manual manipulation. And this is uh, 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 the typical uh, palette which is used, which is also shown in this uh, uh, first booth that we had an event organized by the European Research Council last October in, Na in Napoli, and we have to move the pizza and also to rotate the pizza so as to ensure uniform cooking, because this is by no way the electric oven for a good pizza, but this is the real, uh, the real uh, oven with fire, and the source of fire is unilateral, so that's why you have to rotate the pizza to ensure a uniform cooking. So uh, this is uh, the project I, I wanted to tell you about. And I hope that by the end of the project, which is expected in May of 2018, uh, there is a, a happening, an event in Napoli, which is called Pizza Festival. So uh, my, my big dream in four years from now is to invite all the roboticists to come to Napoli and taste a pizza done by robot. Of course, we, have by, we, have, we don't really pretend to replace the work, the art of the pizzaiolo. But this is just to show that how a simple operation demands a lot on the robotic system. The applications that we foresee for this kind of technology, apart from the joke, from the metaphor of the pizza, are for, uh, for instance, in surgery, where you have to manipulate soft tissues, and also uh, in some sort of teleoperation, in which you want to manipulate some objects which are deformable, which are no rigid. So this is the kind of applications. But we thought that the metaphor of the pizza can render the idea of how complex is to achieve some sort of dexterity and good performance of, uh, of, uh, for a robot. And there is also uh, an added value from an heritage viewpoint. You may be aware that, for instance, the Japanese are using robots and the robots built by the Japanese, they have a sort of uh, biologically inspired appearance. Either humanoids, they insist a lot on humanoids, or also um, of uh, the zoomorphic experience, like they did the dog, they, they did the robot seal, which is used to entertain the elderly people, and the robot seal is also used uh, uh, as a sort of, um, of care for the, ch for the children suffering from autism, because it's very, very smooth, and so the, the children suffering from autism. And also, there's another application of a humanoid robotics technology in Japan, and this, uh, probably you saw the humanoid dancing, one of the classical Japanese dances. This is uh, e-heritage, so it's uh, transmitting the identity, the tradition of the country to the future generations. Because those old arts, like a master of dance, or like a pizza chef, might be lost because we are in a sort of global world and in a way we, we are always projected toward technology and, and so this kind of old art, you know, this kind of craftsmanship may be lost. So the idea of having this as a demonstrator of the pizza is also to have the opportunity uh, and uh, what we will do actually in, after the holiday break in September, the best pizza chef will come to our lab and we will, he will wear a biokinetic suite, sensor suite, and we will scan all the motions. All, and he is the master chef. 
So we will learn from observation. So other than trying to plan trajectories with thousands and thousands of lines of code, we will acquire, we will learn the motion directly from him. So it's also a way to transmit his art towards the future. So this is using technology for heritage. Thank you very much for your kind, for your kind attention.